This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. I'm Roby Brock. Welcome to today's edition of Talk Business and Politics. It is day 23 of the 93rd General Assembly. The calendars were full, but the action was limited with one big exception. There was also news today on the COVID-19 front. Governor Asa Hutchinson holding his weekly Tuesday press conference reported new cases today up 1,510. Total active cases down 334. Deaths up 44 over the last 24 hours. Hospitalizations down 20 and ventilator usage down five patients. The governor also said the state will receive a 5% increase in vaccines delivered, which is on top of the 16% increase announced last week. And he said Walmart will receive 10,000 doses beginning February 11th to be distributed at more than 60 stores in the state. In addition to an increased vaccine supply from the federal government, Governor Hutchinson also said he will not extend beyond February 3rd the 11 p.m. required closing of bars. Well, the biggest debate of the day was Senate Bill 24, the Stand Your Ground Bill, which was up for debate in the House Judiciary Committee. There was significant questioning from members of the panel, particularly on the need for the legislation, which is passed in some version in 36 states. After three and a half hours of testimony and debate, the bill was defeated in the Judiciary Committee on a voice vote. No roll call vote was taken. So Stand Your Ground appears to be stalled for now, at least in the House Judiciary Committee. When we come back from this word from our sponsors, we'll visit with Representative Nicole Clowney, Democrat of Fayetteville, who is on that House Judiciary Committee. She opposed the bill. We'll get her thoughts on how the day went down. And later in the program, we'll take a look at state revenues. The budget surplus is swelling in Arkansas. By how much? Find out after this. Talk Business and Politics is sponsored in part by Capital Advisors Group and... You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. They say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. But if you're looking for something more, Walmart has you covered. We provide quality care, no appointment necessary. Whether you're looking for fresh, healthy groceries to fill your prescription, get a flu shot, or pick up your next pair of glasses, we're standing by with in-store health professionals available across the country to offer patient-first, affordable care whenever you need it. Apple's optional. And welcome back to the program. I am joined now by Representative Nicole Clowney, Democrat from Fayetteville. She is also a member of the House Judiciary Committee where that epic Senate Bill 24 Stand Your Ground Bill uh, vote happened today. It went down in committee. Uh, Representative Clowney, first of all, you opposed the bill. Congratulations on uh, your victory there. Do you consider this a short-lived victory that this bill will be back or do you think that um, you think this is one and done? You know, we've seen iterations of this bill um, for the last few sessions, and I, I am certainly under no, no illusions that this is going to be the last that we see of it. But I do think that today was a really important day and just getting a lot of stories out there uh, for folks to hear things about this bill that are concerning that I think some of what we heard today was new, even to those of us who have who have been fighting this bill for years. So today was a good day. We'll take it one day at a time. Um, but for now, um, I feel really strongly that the best thing for Arkansas has happened. Well, let's talk a little bit about that testimony before we kind of dive into a particular one or two instances I want to ask you about. Do you think that the vote today was kind of preordained from maybe some of the whipping that you guys did to calculate where votes were? Do you think that the testimony actually changed some of the opinion of some of the committee members? You know, I don't think anything is preordained in this job. And I can tell you for sure that those, uh, you know, three hours worth of stories, stories of parents, of loved ones, um, just worried about the impact that this would have on their lives. I know that they made a difference um, for the votes of some of my colleagues. What were some of the, what maybe one or two instances that you think were particularly compelling or that you had not heard before that presented a side to this uh, issue that you thought was powerful? 
you know, we've heard a lot about this bill and its racist implications and effects, and, and that's something that's important and needs talking about. Um, and, and I was happy to hear that today. Something I hadn't heard as much about before was the impact on our Kansans with disabilities. Um, folks with cognitive disabilities who may be seen as a threat when in fact, um, you know, they're just, you know, doing whatever they would do in a normal day. Um, but it would be maybe perceived by a threat by somebody and then used as a reason to justify harming them. Um, those stories, there was a man named Dustin Murphy who talked about his 12 year old son who out of curiosity sometimes you know, walks into neighbors' garages or, or just spittles around. And right now he's 12 and, and his dad is with him usually and he's small and he's a cute little boy. He won't always be that way. And when that cute little boy becomes a man with the same disabilities, this law would really have put his parents in a place of fear for his life every time he left the house. Stories like that, I think, really impacted me. They were new to me and made a difference to my colleagues as well. Um, one of the things that uh, Senator Ballinger and Representative Pilkington presented about the bill today was that, um, that prosecutors were neutral, that law enforcement were neutral, that some things had been changed uh, from the attempt that they made in 2019 on this bill what was different in the bill this time around in terms of your understanding of what the bill would do? So in terms of my understanding, there were some exceptions like, um, you know, people have to be lawfully present to use this defense. Um, people have to be, um, and I think that lawfully present was in the previous version, but something that was new was that if people were involved in gang activity, they would not be able to use the stand your ground defense. I think these are things that may well have had law enforcement and prosecutors end up neutral to the bill. But what I and so many of my colleagues really wanted to figure out was, do any prosecutors or law enforcement actively want this bill? Do any of them see a need for this bill? And while I heard a lot of reasons for this bill from its sponsors today, I never heard that prosecutors or law enforcement want or need this bill in order to do their jobs. Yeah, they were declared neutral on this from the sponsor's point of view there. Uh, something else that Senator Ballinger pointed out too is that if this bill had been problematic in other states, uh, which 36 other states have some version of stand your ground, that there would be repeals of these laws on the books and that that hasn't happened. Why do you, uh, I guess, combat that logic for me? So I think that we're seeing a lot more about stand your ground. These are still relatively new laws. We're seeing a lot more about them in the media. And as a result, repeals are actively um, being pursued in at least four states that currently have this law. So, um, you know, I, I hear that, that a lot of states have done this. I also hear that a lot of states are now seeing that that's problematic. While none have been repealed yet, I'd expect it to happen soon. Um, this is something that Arkansas, you know, we know how this ends in other states. This is no longer just an experiment. It is a failed experiment. We've seen the results in other states. And it's an experiment that, from what I can tell, is really mostly backed by uh, the gun manufacturer's lobby, who very clearly stands to profit um, from this kind of legislation. So until I hear the active need for any piece of legislation, uh, my default is you know, to, to vote against it. I think prosecutors and law enforcement have told me they have what they need. Um, that's all I needed to hear. I don't have to tell you, you have nine Democratic votes on the House Judiciary Committee. It takes 11 to get a bill out of committee. It could take 10 if the Speaker of the House is not there, just based on the, the House rules. It would not take much for Senator Ballinger to come back and under some sort of roll call, get that 10th or 11th vote that's needed. I assume that you expect that to happen. Am I putting thoughts in your mind there? I think, you know, we certainly expect some procedural moves um, to follow and we'll prepare for those as they come along. I can tell you that this vote was not because of Democrats. Um, I mean, that this victory was not solely because of Democrats. Um, there were folks that had problems with this bill on both sides of the aisle. I think this bill is going to take a whole lot of work, and I don't even know that it's possible to get it to a place where you can ease enough concerns um, to, to get to that 10 number. I imagine, as you say, that um, that we'll see efforts to do it, so time will tell. Um, but for now, I can tell you that, that defeating this bill was a bipartisan effort in committee. She is Representative Nicole Clowney, Democrat of Fayetteville. Lots of other things for you to move forward on and things to guard against, I would think, on your uh, agenda this session. Thank you for being with us and we appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. And we're back with more right after this word from our sponsors. Talk Business and Politics is sponsored in part by Impact Management Group and... 
We have a large commitment to our solar for, for good reason. It lowers customers' rates, it's emissions free. Entergy Arkansas is the largest provider of solar in the state of Arkansas. Utility scale solar is much more economic for customers. We're going to operate it, we're going to maintain it, we're going to focus on it. That's what we do for a living. We want to continue to find ways to partner with our customers to meet their renewable energy goals. Customers want this, we want to provide it. So our commitment is for the long term. Stepping into the unknown, it can be difficult to find the way. But with the compassion of the cross and the security of the shield, obstacles become openings. As we have for more than 65 years, we'll continue to light the way, using our knowledge to create new healthcare solutions, giving you the power to shine forward to whatever awaits tomorrow. Arkansas Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Live fearless. Well, there was good news on the budget front today. The January revenue report for the state of Arkansas shows a budget surplus of $400 million. Gross revenue for the first seven fiscal months of the state's fiscal year, that's July through January, is up almost 10% compared to a year ago. Individual income tax is up 11.2%, while sales and use tax collections, a harbinger of consumer spending, rising by 7.5% over a year ago. State economists noted that retail and vehicle sales were the strongest spending categories. And that doesn't mean that we're out of the woods yet for those struggling businesses, so stay safe and hang on. That is all for today's Talk Business and Politics. I'm Roby Brock. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.